back again for our third episode of the Lisbon Panther podcast. How did you like our last episode about club chats? Did you like us on YouTube? Let us know your thoughts. I'm your guest host for today, Ellie Wilcox. In last week's episode, we had several guests talk about different clubs we have at Lisbon. This week, we'll be moving on to a topic that affects so many of the students here at school. That is online safety. But before we get started with today's show, it's time again for the Panther Roundup. What's going on at LRS and the surrounding areas? Well, the Panther Roundup will fill you in. Again, if you know of any local events that our listeners might be interested in, you can reply in the comments. Last week, the varsity girl played at was at Woodsville in the first round at, of playoffs. It was a great game for the girls. They were within five points the whole game. Unfortunately, they came up short and lost by three. The varsity boys finished their season with games against Gorham and Profile. Last week, we also across America Week for students in grades K through 4. They had special guest readers from the Lisbon Police and Fire Departments along with several parents and teacher readers. Of course, this week we are on vacation. Yay! So as a reminder, there will be no episode released next Monday. One upcoming event is that the main, Lisbon Main Street will hold its cardboard celebrities at the Lisbon Ski Toe on Saturday, March 5th at 1 o'clock. See more information on their Facebook page. And now back to today's episode. I'll let their guests, uh, today's guests introduce themselves and let us know what grade they are in. My name is Aiden Stratton and I am in seventh grade. My name is Rachel Harrington and I am in eighth grade. My name is Haley Clark and I am in seventh grade. My name is Tyler Charter and I am in seventh grade. My name is Curran Smith, and I'm in seventh grade. My name is Emma Smith, and I'm in seventh grade. My name is Amelia Metcalf, and I'm in seventh grade. Have any of my guests participated in the cardboard summaries before? I did one year. I have. I did one and painted it hot pink with the number 82 on the side because it was my favorite number. In technology class, seventh graders always spend a lot of time learning and talking about digital citizenship and online safety. So we thought it would be great to share some of the things we've learned. Because, of, because being online is such a big part of our lives, we understand that we have to learn how to deal with situations that come up when we are online. Let's start with Tyler Chartier telling us about some positive things about being online. Um, make friends and find other people who like the same things as you. You can watch your favorite shows and play games. Um, you can listen to podcasts, uh, listen to music. You can make new friends online and look up recipes and DIY videos. You can play it like online games, all sorts of online games. There's probably like tons of them out there. You can um, communicate with friends. With all these positives, we now need to talk about how to keep our experiences online positive. One of the first things we brought up in class was our digital footprint. What is our digital footprint, Emma? Digital footprint is what you post online and how it can look. Co-workers, friends, community members, future boss, future colleges, families can all see what you post and it can affect getting to college or getting a job. Predators can find you. A predator is something we will talk about later on in this podcast. But they can sometimes find where you are. They don't give out information like where you live or the school you go to. Don't swear online and post inappropriate content, like nudes, slurs, and judgment, judgmental posts. It can make people sad. What you do online can affect others. The little, it is very scary almost, because when you look on, when you're online, you gotta be very, very careful of those people who are trying to steal your password and everything. I mean. 
you can't like the location wise you can't give out like anything i mean sometimes i say i'm in from a i'm from a different location than i really am like i'd say i'm from montana or california yeah. but not in hampshire yeah i've had uh problems with uh lots of things with my parents and family members asking why i post that stuff and i realize that i have to be careful now i can't just post anything because it's on there yeah, even the smallest things and details you put on your account can really affect what happens in the future. Yeah, yeah I and I've, it's never happened really much to me. It's, well, barely. It's, it hasn't really happened to me at all, but I still got to be careful either way. I just got to step back and think, wow, this is, okay, I got to get out of here. You know, we block this person if they're... And then, like, you gotta just be careful after you block them. And if, even if you block them, they can still find you. They can create spam accounts. They can create or in, in Finsta accounts. They can just find you either way because they have your username, like, online. They have it. I mean, this has never happened to me, but uh, they can definitely track you down. They can even. It may not be in person, but it's online, so it's even more scary because you don't know who that person is. We all know in the past couple of years, COVID has caused us to change our digital habits a little. Some for the better and some for the worse. Do you have, Amelia, do you have some questions about digital habits for us? When you go online, how are you feeling? Happy, sad, or good? Um, I'm usually happy. I'm usually happy, but I always have the thought in the back of my head that if I say or do the wrong thing, something could come as a consequence. Depending on how you feel, does it change how you operate or what you do online? Yeah, regardless if it has happened to you or not, you still have to be careful because you never know what could happen. Yeah. Uh, if you were to lose your digital device, how would you feel? Um, I would personally feel probably sad because I do use my digital device to talk to my friends all day and communicate with my boyfriend and my parents. And if I didn't have that, I'd probably just be like extremely bored and probably really sad. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Um, I've gotten my devices taken away before, and I feel like once you do you just learn how to like do stuff without it but sometimes I felt like all my friends had it and uh, it was kind of get, like getting annoying because I didn't have anybody to talk to while I was at home. Yeah, yeah it's boring. Yeah, yeah very boring. it gets very boring when you don't have your device and you have to learn how to live without it. Uh, I would feel like very unsocial because I couldn't talk to any of my friends or yeah, well, I, I'm i an outdoors kid. I like going outside. I like doing all that. So if, if we didn't have electronics, it wouldn't be the end of the world for Jimmy. I can work with my dad. Currently fairly stressed. I have a lot of online friends. I was losing my digital device online. I've had like, bad times where my mom's like, yeah, you get that taken away from doing that. And I learned how to respect it and how to make sure it doesn't happen again. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. You're never going to get it back sometime. But like, just try to be safe. You don't have to. Does anyone have like an addiction to being online or um, being uh, uh, I personally do. Uh, outside of school, I'm on my phone a lot. Um, I wouldn't say I would be addicted to being like online and stuff, but I definitely prefer being online than like not being online and just being like bored and not having anything to do. Yeah. Yeah, like after school, I get super tired after school because I'm a hype guy at school. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, I'm just going to relax, and then I ended up relaxing for like yeah, a few hours, and then. 
get it. But then I realized, oh my gosh, how long have I been on this? You know, because it's been like, I realized it was, it's like almost like that, almost. It's like you flip a switch and then it's nighttime. Yeah. Um, Rachel? Um, I wouldn't consider myself addicted, but I wouldn't consider myself not because I do en really, really enjoy going on my phone and I go on my phone as much as I'm allowed to and as much as I think is enough. And But that doesn't stop me from going to other places and going to hang out with friends or going to see family because I can get off of my device when I have to. But if I don't have to and I have a choice, I will choose to use it. Um, I would say I'm like borderline addicted just because I'm on it like as much as possible, but I still like go out in places and stuff like you said. Um, has anyone dealt with either getting cyberbullied or having depression online? Oh, um, I haven't experienced it myself, but I've seen people online that haven't been so nice. Rachel? Um, I actually unfortunately have experienced that. Um, and it's not fun because even if you know the person, it's just something that you wouldn't expect, especially if you guys were friends like a week before that. And then all of a sudden they all say all these mean things to you and everything. So, yeah. Uh, uh I personally have been cyberbullied online. Um, she constantly harassed me and would, um, uh, Destroy things that I had. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, but I haven't done several of these. So, but I've seen people getting scammed online. Yeah. I try whenever someone gets scammed, I always feel super bad for them, so I give them something online and say. Um, I had once gotten into threats for not believing in someone else's belief. And they had kept telling me like these things like I'm gonna come to your house, I'm gonna stab you, or I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna shoot you and make sure you put up a cross in your house. And I was like, okay, calm down. Um, I have been several bullied multiple times in my life, and I've dealt with it different ways, but it really does make a toll on you, and it can bring up new things like insecurities. You're not feeling as happy as you were before. Um, but has anyone had any uh, insecurities online? Ellis? Um, I feel like a lot of girls struggle with this, but just going like on any social media, like, Instagram, Snapchat, and seeing like a girl with the most perfect body, it just makes you feel like bad about yourself and that you're not good enough. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. Well, whenever someone, I think whenever someone has the perfect like, but this is just me, but it, when someone has like a perfect life and everything, I just think, hey, that's that's gonna be me in like 35 years, and just gotta keep dreaming about it, you know. But you it, think there's, there's such a thing as a perfect life? No, no there's well, no, just, no, there's no such thing as a perfect life. I feel like they, not they, but everybody, like every single person that decides to use social media, should keep it real and keep it truthful instead of just making up lies and making up stories and instead of using filters and effects to make yourself look in quotes prettier or in quotes perfect you should just be yourself online so that you don't make other people feel bad about themselves just because of how much editing you did on a video or a picture you posted how can we change our digital habits when it affects our emotional and mental health if you're struggling to, or you're struggling with body image or anything like that, I feel like you should remove yourself from the social medias that are causing that and go on ones that don't have the same or similar things that you were looking at before to stop that and to make yourself feel better about yourself because in my eyes, everyone is perfect. And talking about emotional health online, we watched a movie last month called The Cyber Well, we won't give anything away, but it brings up the topic of cyberbullying. Ailee, do you want to tell us some more about cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is a very common thing. If you are witnessing cyberbullying, you should definitely be an upstander instead of a bystander. A bystander is when you're just watching and not doing anything. 
independent upstanders when we are taking actions and trying to help and prevent cyberbullying. You can meet upstander by standing up for the person that's being bullied, by saying something to the bully, or report them in a screenshot. When you are being bullied, you should report them, block them. You can tell someone about it, like adult. And you can try to make sure the bully doesn't get to you. Let's take a minute to talk about our privacy. What are some ways to protect our privacy, Fred? Protecting privacy. There's two-step verification. I personally like to use this, definitely, because the two-step verification, you can, it sends you an email of a code, and you just copy and paste that in, and then protect, and who else, who else uses two-step verification? I do. I do. It makes it safer. Yeah. I have multiple emails, so it's kind of difficult to switch through all of them to try to find it. Um, protecting passwords, strong passwords. Um, so, like, you can't use, um, can't use, basically, you can't use, like, one, two, three, four, or, because that's the most common password. But another thing is, um, try not to use your pet's name in it, because hackers can find out about your pets if they get too because one of the most common ones is pets. Why? Um, yeah, you also want to have a strong and long password so it's more difficult for people to get it. And you want to change it often because if you just keep the same password for years, um, people are going to figure it out. So try to uh, change them as often as you can. Not like every single day, but change them like maybe every month or week. We invited Rachel, an eighth grader, to talk to us about scams, which they studied in eighth grade. So some of the ways that you can uh, avoid identity theft is if you're um, careful with your passwords and you make them secure so that no one actually gets into your account in the first place. And you can keep all of your personal information away from websites that are not familiar to you. And things that some people like to do that are going to try to steal your identity is they will send you a link that seems believable or they'll use money as an example that you'll say, oh, if you type your stuff into this link, you'll win $100. And most people will be like, oh, it's money, I have to do it. And then you'll type your personal information in, and then they'll steal your identity and get all like your personal info that isn't supposed to be shared. And catfishing is when someone pretends to be someone that they're not. So if you ever are talking to someone that you just met, there are certain things that you should do to make sure that they are who they say they are and not some 90 year old man that's trying to like just do weird stuff to you so just be careful and make sure that everyone you talk to you know them and you know that it's their account and you know the person is the person that they say they are and be careful with your passwords and be careful sharing personal information online recently we've been talking about very serious consequences of online behavior and that is dealing with cyber predators amy is going to tell us about how to protect yourself from predators and how they lure you in Predators and grooming people happens very commonly. A predator can lure someone in by asking questions, finding things that they have in common, or pretending some to be someone that they're not. Uh, they could also agree with you and try to find your emotional weak spot. Uh, we could tell an adult, police, or any a trusted person um, about this if this happens to you, and you could stop communicating with them with blocking them. It's almost like hunting almost, because when you're the predator and you want to lure your prey in. So it's kind of like hunting because it's like fishing or hunting. You have the lure, you have the bait on it. You slowly put it in and pull it in. And then when the fish finally gets on you, you pull it back and you reach it. I know you mentioned something about, you know, what are their, what are their techniques. So they, they start off by doing what? Being friendly. Just pretending they're like... Maybe pretending they're someone that you know. Age, or if you say something like, oh, dogs are my favorite animal, then they'll probably agree with you. Also, I try and help you with your problems and find ways to meet up with you to solve them. And then they try to make you feel safe with only them and no one else. They'll talk about or they'll help you 
with your problems so they know what makes you emotionally weak and what you're struggling with so that they can get back at you if you try to do anything. And in the end, what do they end up doing? Threatening you, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to be using technology for many years to come, I'm going to ask everybody about what they can do to be a good digital citizen. Tyler, you can start. Be careful what you post. Anyone can see it once it's there, it's there forever. Don't talk to people you don't know online. Make sure you don't overshare your information. Make good passwords and change them often. Protect your privacy and don't give up too much information in profiles. Stand up for those who are being cyberbullied. Be a good community member and warn people if you think something bad's going to happen to the person they're talking to. Just be kind to others and be positive. Well, thank you for coming today and thank you all for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. We are all hoping you've learned a little bit about staying safe online. Remember, we are on vacation. So the next episode, which will be titled Year of the Book, and movie review. We'll have guests from students in K through six. Episodes are released every Monday. We especially want to thank the Lisbon Education Foundation for purchasing equipment for our podcast. If you'd like to donate to the Education Foundation, you can find information on the school's website. Bye.